How did you decide on this occupation? How did I decide? It, it was decided for me. When I was... I've known probably since the age of six or seven. We had a snowstorm in 78, February. When I lived in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey where it doesn't snow much. We got about two feet of snow out of that one, and that, that pretty much solidified it. I was fascinated by the power. Okay. And that, that solidified it. But I've known probably since the age of six or seven this is what I wanted to do. You, you'll find a lot of meteorologists don't luck into what they do or just fall into it. It's, a usually, it's usually a calling. And you liked that because it's like the weather's constantly changing? or I, liked, I, I was fascinated by the amount of power that could be released in a very short period of time. How, okay. how dynamic things could be. Okay. How quickly things could change. Okay. How did you prepare for this, this job? I was lucky. I knew I wanted one of those people that knew right from the beginning in college what I wanted to do, and it was pretty simple to draw a line to where I needed to be. Okay. I needed to beef up on math. Okay. Physics, I was okay. Math, I wasn't. I had to work extra hard at the math, the physics. I had to make sure I had that science background solidified before I could go forward. Okay. So that's where most of the preparation was done. If you were hiring a person for this job, what would you? What would your qualifications be? Everybody has patience and humility among those. <laughs> No, if, it is, if, 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 it is, if it is, I haven't seen any. <laughs> I haven't seen too many examples of it, which is amazing. Considering the field, you would be surprised how many forecasters you will run into who are sure of what they're doing. And it seems like as they get older, they become more sure of it. As I get older, I become less sure. <laughs> the job teaches you humility. If it doesn't, then you're, you're not paying attention. I want somebody who can think on their feet. Okay. I want someone who can do more than one thing at a time. That's what the job is going to require. There are days like today where there's yeah. not much going on, and yeah. you know we can we can talk back and forth. Dan and I can talk about forecast philosophy, one of our favorite things, because that's one of the things you don't talk about much. Operational meteorologists tend to bury their heads in whatever they're doing. It's nice to talk philosophy to get a different a point a point of view. So I want somebody who can who can think on their feet, who can change, who can turn like that, who can assess a situation make a decision and move onward. If your decision is wrong, you turn around, you assess the situation, you go on. Somebody who's not gonna sit and wallow over a mistake. Okay. If you think that being wrong is an issue for you and what you do, don't do this. Somebody who can do more than one thing at a time and not just walk and chew gum. Being able to see this blinking, talking to you, processing this information, while, meanwhile, keep an eye on the the upslope uh, clouds in the, in the uh, on the satellite image there. Somebody who can talk to somebody on the phone and understand that you're explaining a science mm. to a layperson. Mm -hmm. That there is a large difference in knowledge between what you have and what that person has. You have to listen to what the person is asking for. Our job is to interpret the science. Mm -hmm. people. I want somebody, you don't have to be personable necessarily, it's, it helps. You have to be able to understand what's going on around you. And these are all intangibles that you would have to talk to somebody face to face about. Yeah. I would have your resume in front of you, I know what you've done, I know what your, your publications are. You know what? Everybody has that. Everybody has a list of what they've done. I want the, I want the, the things that 20 years of experience have taught me would make you a successful meteorologist. Am I a successful meteorologist? Depends on the day. <laughs> if I've had a good day, yes. Yesterday, meteorologically, was very challenging. Was it a success? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. I want somebody who's introspective, who would say, all right, this went wrong. Why? Be curious. Okay. I want somebody who's curious. Why? Not someone who comes and sits down and says, all right, I didn't get it wrong, and just moves on, looks at a model and says, right. Somebody says, well, all right, why did this go wrong? Somebody who enjoys the science. Somebody who wants to be here. So I'm not somebody who's seeing this as a stepping stone to something else. It might be, but not necessarily. So a lot of things that are not necessarily meteorological. Okay. Do you have to be able to get along with people? <laughs> I've seen a lot of meteorologists who couldn't, so, you know, it would be helpful. Okay. But there's a, a lot of non-meteorological things would go into that decision. Because okay. everybody who steps into the office with a degree in meteorology, I assume knows at least the basics. Let's go beyond that. What are your major um, responsibilities on the job? Me specifically or as a forecaster in general? 
you specifically? I'm shift supervisor. Okay. So I'm responsible for pretty much everything that happens here. Um, I'm, I'm responsible for data integrity, forecast integrity, uh, people integrity, making sure they get their jobs done. But more important, making sure they get the things they need to make sure the job gets done. If a problem needs to get solved, it's my responsibility to make sure it gets solved. Doesn't mean I have to do it, but I do have to make sure that it gets done. Okay. I'm working with two guys who are very experienced. If there's a problem, we'll solve it. But if, if um, we're working with someone who's coming on board, it would be the onus would be more on me to solve the problem and then turn around and teach them how to do it. We have a joy of our ear occupation. What personal rewards are there? I like I like solving puzzles. So uh, if I can get a puzzle right, it's fun. <laughs> okay. That's the personal response part of it. Uh, just trying to figure out. Um, just go head to head with with Mother Nature and see how, you turn, how it turns out. What future do you see in your occupation? Personally or the, the occupation itself? Both. Both. For me personally, I think this is the end of the line. I'm, I enjoy operation, operational forecasting. I, I would like to do this as long as I can. I don't know how long that's going to be. The, the science continuously changes, the needs of the users continuously changes, and of mm -hmm. course the technology always changes. Mm -hmm. This job is not what it was 10 years ago. And it would be hard for me to imagine what the job will be 10 years from now. I think what we're going to see is more of an emphasis on what happens right in front of our face out through 24 hours. We'll be supporting decision makers. We'll be guiding first responders, as well as putting out the forecast that we do for the general public. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be expanding our knowledge of how things happen in near time the near real time, that kind of thing. We'll be more responsive to that as where computers will take over some of the more mundane portions of the forecast for days three, four, five, six, seven, where we don't necessarily have as much to offer. We don't have any value add, any value to add to that. We, our value is added, our money is, we earn our money in the first 24 hours of the forecast. Mm -hmm. What other occupations that are closely related to this? I don't know, I, I always kind of thought of us as kind of like general practitioners, like doctors. Some days we're general practitioners, some days we're ER docs. You know, it, it depends on the day. Okay. You know, we, we could come in, sit down, and, and all hell's breaking loose. And we we take care of what needs to be done first, and everything else goes toward the weight side, or we have days like today where we can focus on what's going on or, or, and do other things. Okay. So what other job would it be like? Maybe something like that? Okay. What part-time work experiences could help me get better acquainted with this occupation? What you're doing right now is very good. Any for Anybody who wants to be a forecaster work for the National Weather Service, setting foot inside a weather service office, volunteering uh, to work in an office, at, let's say a private meteorologist, go see how a TV meteorologist works, I think prepares themselves for uh, a, a, a career in the field, especially in the weather service. If you were to do uh, a more formal internship. I think you okay. you put yourself several steps above someone else vying for the same position. Okay.